Well, I'm still in shock. I'm still processing the fact I went to Fallout Boy last night. This video probably won't make it on the internet in time when I defined last night. Last night, right now, was October 22nd, 2017. Today's October 23rd, 2017. We had 12 years to go to this concert. Got floor seats. My friend Jamie was pretty good and she got floor seats. <laughs> they did not disappoint. The stage is like a long stage for the Mania tour. And I wish Pete Wentz came more closer to where I was, but came halfway maybe. But Patrick, when he went by, like, I about died. <laughs> Patrick's cute. He's cuter in person. Like, this felt like a dream and Joe came by a couple of times. Then if you've been to the Mania tour or you've seen pictures or heard about it or anything, you know, on the other side of the stage, the there's probably a tunnel to the stage because they uh, were raised up on these platforms on the other side of the stage so people who had shitty seats got a good view. And I'm at the other end of the stage, close enough, and uh, at one point, <laughs> I was probably screaming loud enough for the drummer, Andy, to hear me, and he looked my way and smiled at a bunch of us, and I about died there. I'm like, oh my gosh. <laughs> So it was pretty cool. I mean, like, I'm just still processing it all. But waiting 12 years to see these guys was worth the wait. It just wish the show was longer. I didn't really care so much for Jaden Smith or Black Bear. I, would, I missed Jaden Smith because I was in the merchandise line. Nothing against them. I'm just, that's not my type of music. I liked Black Bear's energy and how kind he was to this girl because she handed him her shoe. So you want to want me to sign this baby? And she goes, yes. So, but overall, the concert didn't disappoint. Like it's rare if Fall Out Boy doesn't that they sound bad. I mean, I've one time that I've heard them sing live is on Ellen, and it was alone together. They didn't sound so great, but it wasn't them necessarily. It was something to do with the sound stage or whatever. But hopefully next year, next time they go on tour, excuse me, I'm still kind of tired from going. They'll do me great. So I can tell them then how much they mean to me. And these guys have literally saved my life. I've been a fan since I was 14. I know they've been around longer, but each time I try to take my life as a teenager, their music was there to build me back up. So. Excuse me. So it means a lot to me. And because of them, I'm a mother. I'm still here. I have the opportunity to be a mother to my three-year-old Andrew. That little boy is the world to me. I don't know if they'll ever see this message or see this video but it's worth a shot. I mean, like, there's been a couple people who, when FallOutBoyRock.com had these boards where you can talk about the band or talk about the music, a couple girls remembered me, and they're like, thanks for sticking up for everybody. I think the boards, I don't know why the boards got taken down. My hunch is that maybe when they were on the hostiatus, that's what happened, and there was an inappropriate picture of Pete's junk that kept being shared, and... I don't think that's right, and that may have been a reason. I don't know. But people who know me and know of me know I'm a huge fan. I mean, like, here's an example. Um, I had a lot of help with this painting, but I did some of it myself. I don't know if you can see that. It's a Fall Out Boy one. did some of that. I had a lot of help, but it... You know, that was the Infinity on High Era. But how I originally got hooked on them was, uh, oh, excuse me. 
I was a sophomore in high school, and uh, I'm like, where is everybody? Because not very many people were at school. And uh, someone says, well, they've all gone to a Fall Out Boy concert. I'm like, who's Fall Out Boy? Later on, not too after that, long after that, I heard Sugar were going down swinging. And that was probably their single at the time. And ever since then, I was hooked. So... I don't know, and I, my friend Jamie and I traveled, we live in Iowa, three hours to St. Paul, Minnesota, I'm not giving you my exact location because you don't do that on the internet, but three hours just to see them. Hopefully next time they come to Des Moines again. So if that's the case, you know, it's like an, it's a hour and a half drive instead of a three hour depending what route you take I think the only disappointing thing about the whole concert was like it wasn't long enough it's like 90 minutes wasn't enough of fall out but it's like damn it and then of course I'm wearing my tour shirt And I felt, like, really excited to be around all these other people who were just as big as fans as I was. I, it's rare to meet people who are a big fan like I am. I'm so sorry. I'm yawning a lot in this video. I'm just so tired. So to be around a lot of people who felt the same amount of love for this band as I did was amazing. <laughs> there was no mosh pit. Otherwise, I would have been in it, and I probably would have got hurt. <laughs> but also, something really cool happened at the concert. This little girl, I didn't know what the sign said. I just, all I heard was right on, I don't care. I didn't find out till this morning what it said. It said, it's past my bedtime, and I don't care. Well, Pete saw it, and, and security wouldn't let her have it. He's like, I love your sign. I'll trade you, I think it was like t-shirts and a couple guitar picks for it. And that was really kind of Pete, like, like, that's one of the reasons I like these guys so much. They're so kind, they're down to earth. They're smart asses. I mean, Jamie and I were talking in the car, like, Joe and Andy are probably the least appreciated band members because people tend to like Patrick or Pete. Each, all of, all four of them are important to me. Actually, my favorite band member is the drummer. <laughs> Probably because I can relate to him a lot because I'm not, I may not be vegan like he is, but he loves animals just as much as I do. And he's badass for all these tattoos. I mean, like you see in interviews, Pete and Patrick are most of the ones talking and Joe and Andy are in the corner. Well, if you ever seen the interviews and Andy or Joe opens up their mouth, they're smart asses and you know, <laughs> the things they say are kind of inappropriate, but I don't care. <laughs> I think they would be really cool guys to meet or be friends with. Mm. Visual thinking of fantasy. They're probably not, you know, friends with very many fans. <laughs>